Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at uh, the new player that has re-emerged in our market, that is Virgin Galactic. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand about Virgin Galactic, it's a sub company of Virgin Group. Virgin Group have a lot of things. Many of you are familiar with uh, Virgin Airlines. Basically, think of it that way. It's uh, basically a small company in a larger company. Now, this whole idea of space tourism is a dream of Richard Branson. It's basically Elon Musk. Now, this is an old company. To be frank, it uh, was created in 2004, uh, basically before SpaceX became prominent. Now, to give you a context of it, what kind of history we are talking about here is that they are not targeting for satellites, they are not targeting for space, they are targeting for tourism. So to make their dreams more attainable, what they did is basically they are targeting what we call suborbital flights. Basically, they're going like this. They're not going, they're not orbiting Earth, they simply go and they come down. Basically, it's a ballistic trajectory, it's not an orbital trajectory. So, and it does not even cross properly uh, that 100 k kilometer mark. They are trying to uh, cross upwards of 120. They can do it, it's just they haven't done it properly yet. So, that's their target. Do not expect that uh, their vehicle will carry you to orbit and, you know, uh, put you in complete circular orbit and then bring you back it will be only a very short while a suborbital system now how they uh, gonna achieve this is very simple they're gonna have what we call air launched rocket basically if you're uh, familiar with rockets you must be familiar with the fact that nozzles have what we call efficiency based on atmospheric pressure so basically the nozzle that will work flawlessly in sea level will not work that well when you are at higher altitude now the uh, a nozzle that will work flawlessly in vacuum will not work that good in you know uh, sea level so uh, there is a generally engineers come up with a compromise or they end up creating what we call stages so this is equivalent of that instead of having uh, first rocket stage it has first aircraft stage now this aircraft is a simple aircraft re obviously modified it goes up to uh, 50,000 feet or whatever they can manage basically they want to send it as fast as high up as possible be mindful subsonic it's not a supersonic system height can be adjusted but they cannot go supersonic this craft is not designed for supersonic shock waves so this is basically like the first stage of the rocket now they go uh, they take off from a runway like an any aircraft they run on completely independent system that's why i'm calling this a stage it's not a complete system it's a completely different stage then they fire their rockets now uh, if you want to get a context of this what i'm showing you here it's basically spaceship one now this was completed in 20 may 2003 so if you're like okay that's a long back well yes it's an old system so how does this whole magical things work now if you are familiar with a liquid fueled rocket you must be familiar with the fact that you don't like to be you know uh, basically shaken around so how are you gonna have a rocket that is going from basically horizontal to vertical so uh, to bypass that problem and other also problems they are gonna use what we call hybrid rocket motor what does that mean very simple take space shuttle and mix it together now space shuttle have both engines basically it has liquid uh, engines that is called space shuttle main engine and then it has solid booster so you take the solid booster and instead of uh, providing it its own inbuilt oxygen like uh, the powder that is used in uh, rocket solid rocket motors are generally containing oxygen itself they are removing that oxygen it's like okay just put uh, the fuel aspect of it and let's remove the oxidizer so they can control it so they are getting best of both world so oxidizer is allowing them to control which many of you are familiar with solid rocket booster they know it has no controllable factors here they're taking the simplicity reliability of srb they're putting the srb then they are putting the liquid fuel now in earlier days the fuel uh, basically the oxidizer was nitrous oxide why it's non-cryogenic it does not give you the best specific impulse but it is very good non-cryogenic simply means you can store it in a normal tank and uh, it does uh, give you a tangible performance so early stages use that so this rocket engine that you are seeing basically think of it that way it has a srb here now srb will not burn normal srb will burn itself this will not burn because it has a two-part system so srb is in the uh, you know this assembly and then there is a fuel tank the fuel tank is generally either liquid oxygen or nitrous oxide for higher performance they are going for uh, liquid oxygen so this liquid oxygen goes there oxidizes the fuel solid fuel that is there and boom 
you got your rocket this simplifies their operation gives them control it's cheaper than completely you know they don't have to have fancy turbocharger and expensive things like that so this is cheaper this is i told you like best of both world however be mindful this is the reason why they can't go full orbital this is not very powerful system this is not like you know a raptor engine or like you know vulcan engines this this is a puny engine comparatively speaking so they take the plane as high as they can go roughly around 30 to 50 thousand feet is their uh, target and then they launch the second system because it's a solid grain system they don't have to do you know completely uh, anti sloss buckling that they need for liquid fuel system they can easily manage it so this is how they work the first stage is a plane that completely wears off and it's non-destructive so the wearing off that doesn't mean you are discarding it it will simply come back it's a completely reuse of first stage and then they fire this off which is also reusable so uh, be mindful if this is that old like 2003 man that's old man what happened it's like uh, basically <laughs> when they first came out and their idea was a maiden flight would be around 2009 and they will start selling tickets at 2012 so let's just say that didn't happen now it, it also suffered a fatality now that fatality is completely a human error fatality it's not that a craft was wrong or anything like that so what they are doing in this craft is going up is one thing going coming back down without burning up is another thing now generally space shuttle relies on you know heat shields and uh, new space uh, SpaceX rockets will rely on active cooling of some sort or stainless steel. So in those sort of scenario, you have a very big barrier to protect you against the heat. They do not possess such a thing because their craft is very light. So what they rely on is atmosphere itself to slow down. So if you are familiar with this fin, when it's coming down, when it's going into orbit, the fin falls up. Now that increases the drag dramatically. However, you must open it at precise time. If you open it too early, it will not do anything. If you open it too late, it will break apart break apart happened so fatality did occur now be mindful spacex have many rockets blown up but they do not possess any fatality this does possess a fatality so delay wise it's uh, well it puts a elon musk timeline into perspective basically they are he was very optimistic like and he even built uh, airports for this like airport is already done with uh, flight controllers and traffic uh, system everything done it's just uh, the vehicle is far more complex than they thought now, the complexity of this is not complex in terms of, okay, it's a new thing. They knew how to build it, they knew it's just making it safe enough. Basically, human rating is not something easy. And problem with, uh, basically, aviation industry is how they're gonna rate it. This is not a spacecraft, proper spacecraft, so they cannot rate it as spacecraft. This is going higher than any commercial airlines, how they're gonna rate it. So, it's a very um, chicken and egg situation. How are you gonna rate it and how are you gonna make it safe enough? So, this is what's causing the delay. And not to mention, uh, the failure, actually kind of uh, illustrated the fact that he was very optimistic in the early days like oh it's gonna be as safe as modern airlines many people are not familiar with the fact that airlines have been flying for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in the air that's why it's so safe now at the early stage it wasn't so this system that you're gonna just take off of course let's say uh, your first stage is 100% safe because it is a normal plane what about the second stage this is the untested part and see this happened because of a human error so this uh, kind of uh, uh, shook faith a little bit and be mindful he many times have said that he wanted to be like Elon Musk but that dream dream came to be true. So what we can expect in the future now be mindful when they originally internet this is the virgin spaceship 2 basically the the ship spaceship one went to the space but it was only for one person they want to send upwards of eight people two uh, pilots and uh, six passenger so they have a bigger craft which is this and they're gonna send it to as high as they can send it and then launch the second stage which will take you to space now this whole idea at the early stages was mind-boggling however today it's not so simply because if they had delivered on their proper timeline they would have been like leaps and bounds ahead of everyone however today they have a big competitor what we call blue origin because it's both of them are providing the same service i'm not going into spacex because spacex is not targeting uh, what we call uh, uh, cheap uh, space access they can sell you access to the moon but that's expensive so this is kind of medium tier this is something that uh, most people should be able to afford who can afford to go to europe for vacation they should be able to afford this so now that you have two competition now this system is much simpler this has progressed uh, like phenomenally well and it hasn't had any crashes or things of that nature so and not to mention the engines that they are using have been clarified for military projects so 
they, this is progressing uh, very well so this two are competing directly head to head and there are some other companies that may be coming up i have heard rumors about them but uh, i cannot be certain about them however uh, the road ahead for virgin galactic is not clear even though just uh, recently as of me making this video they have uh, achieved a very big milestone the road ahead is not clear a it's way too expensive b it's way too delayed c because you have to mind for even if the plane is cheap even if the rocket is the r d cost they have to recover because there are uh, you know delays in the process it's humongous so that cost is the problem for them not the craft craft is relatively cheap but uh, the R&D cost of decades that have went into it, it's expensive. So now, however, Blue Origin is also suffering through some setbacks simply because Jeff Bezos is getting the divorce. And be mindful, Blue Origin was uh, Jeff Bezos' personal project, so to say. Now, it does have, a, you know, uh, what you call financial balancing system. So it's not like one person fails and it goes down, but it is relying on that. It's like uh, it's early stage of SpaceX where if Elon Musk died at that time, uh, the SpaceX would have collapsed. It's like that. So the current uh, estimates are like Elon, Jeff Bezos should lose around $4 billion because of the divorce so let's see how what how it affects it because it's not going to affect amazon amazon have fail safe on top of fail safe on top of fail safe this was a passion project so how blue origin comes uh, at the other end maybe they will rush this project because this can give them uh, what you call revenue source very quickly this is a very quick simple solution for them so the road ahead is not uh, easy let's just let's just put it that way so would i put my money on virgin galactic no it's way way too late for now because like what are you offering like this is a quick simple system this is a very complex system and it is so expensive not because this plane is expensive plane that can be mass produced but the fact that they had spent 10 12 30 years of like r d going over who's gonna pay for that so as of now as i'm talking to you i am not very optimistic for virgin galactic but i would like them to, uh, you know succeed because the more competition better the pricing for us so this was my presentation on Virgin Galactic. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment on my video and please subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.